Hi everyone, today on Project Infinity, I'm going to be taking apart a neon sign transformer in order to remove the secondary ground fault circuitry as well as the center tap. This will allow me to use it as a high voltage power supply for a number of scientific apparatus, but particularly my fuser project. So I want to start this video by saying this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm not an electrical engineer and know what you're doing before trying anything like this yourself. I'm only showing you how I made my power source and I can't claim that this is the right or the safest way to do it. So neon sign transformers are durable, cheap, easily accessible, and can deliver up to 15,000 volts. This makes them really attractive for use in my fuser project, but they do come with certain pitfalls. Most modern NSTs contain a secondary ground fault circuit, which cuts power when one of the secondary posts are grounded. This circuit will have to be removed in order to avoid flirting with the certain death, which is leaving the fuser shell floating at high voltage. And unfortunately, removing the circuit will only solve half the problem. Modern NSTs are center tapped, meaning one side of both the secondary coils within the transformer are connected to the grounded core. This creates a situation where grounding one high voltage terminal halves the total rated voltage of the transformer. Removing the center tap allows for the full voltage through the secondaries while also grounding one terminal. This consequentially and counterintuitively makes some of the off-label uses of the transformers much, much safer than leaving the safety mechanisms in place and just working around them, because this way your device is not left ungrounded. So continue watching to see how I accomplish the modifications. After getting the lid off this model NST, I'll have to gain access to the transformer itself by depotting it from what looks like tar. A word of caution, digging around old transformers can expose you to the carcinogenic substance called polychlorinated biphenols, or PCBs. Luckily, these were phased out in the late 70s, and conveniently, this case has no PCBs stamped on a lid. All right, so just gonna take a little chunk of this tar, and then Put it in the Petri dish, because I'm going to test it just to make sure it is tar and not epoxy, just to make sure. All right, so there's the tar. This is mineral spirits. Uh, it's heated up a little bit, so it dissolves a little faster. Yep, for sure. It's definitely tar. Um, this would not dissolve if it's epoxy. So I know I can heat up the mineral spirits a little bit and uh, clean up the rest of the parts after I melt out the tar. It's perfect. All right, so now that we know that this is actually tar and uh, not epoxy, we can actually get it out of here or use the heat to melt it out. We can go ahead and get rid of the secondary ground fault circuitry. Uh, we know that this is part of the circuitry, these wires. This is obviously just part of the circuitry. So is this ground. And that just leaves us with these five wires. They go back to the transformer or from the uh, power line in. So we can just cut these off. All right, so we can do a little bit of investigation and use this multimeter just in the lowest setting for ohms. And we'll check continuity between these wires. So we know this side for sure. This is our input to the transformer from the wall. Um, green is ground, black is hot, and white is neutral. So we can ignore ground. That's just going to the case and to the secondary coils in the center tap. But let's go, just try to start with black first. And um, looking at the setup here, I mean, you can see these wires kind of go in this direction. So there's one black and one white, so I'm only assuming that those are from the wall. So let's go, currently we're on black, the hot from the wall. And yep, we have continuity there. Just to be sure, let's check continuity with white, nothing. And these three wires are going, I'm assuming, to the primary coil. Uh, let's check continuity here just in case, nothing with white. Nothing with red, 
and nothing with blue. So yeah, this is definitely our hot from the wall and it would only make sense that this other white over here is our neutral from the wall. Let's check that. Okay, we have continuity there. So we know what these two wires are and how to wire those. And let's just check out this side. So this leaves us with, um, uh, one of these wires goes somewhere, I'm, I'm actually not sure. We'll uh, melt the tar out and see. But the, the other two wires here should be the primary coil. So let's find that. Start with blue and go to white. Nothing there, so keep on white. And let's go to this red. Okay. Yeah, that looks about right. 1.2, 1.1 ohms. That'll be the resistance in the primary coil. So we can ignore blue then. Yeah, because we have no continuity here between red and blue. I, I'm not sure where this goes exactly. We can find out once uh, we melt all the tar out of here. But So this one we're just going to ignore. And we'll put, let's see, this is our power in, power to the coil, um, the primary coil. So we'll do white to white and black to red. Okay, got it wired up. You can see over here we have the black and red, white and white, and blue by itself. And over on the input side, we have the three wired accordingly. All right, so I have my grounding rod and I'm gonna pull an arc from either side of the secondary. So this should be seven and a half thousand volts from either side. Let's turn on the variac, crank it up. Okay, so we're full with the variac. So the secondary ground circuitry would not allow us to do this. It would throw a fault code and cut voltage. So let's pull it from the right. Cool. Great, that's from the right. Let's go from the left coil. Great. Perfect. Voltage is off. All right, so if my primary goal was to get rid of that secondary ground fault circuit, then I would be done right now. I'd, I'd probably want to uh, get rid of these wire nuts and make a more permanent uh, arrangement with the soldered joints and heat shrink and uh, put the lid back on, but I'd be all done now. But I want to take it to the next level and get rid of that center tap. So I'll get started now. Okay, here I have my kiln. Uh, for obvious reasons, I don't want to do this in my oven. Uh, I mean, 400 degrees, it's definitely capable of doing it, but this tar can be some pretty nasty stuff. Although this doesn't have any PCBs in it, which is uh, nice, but we'll keep it out in the kiln. So down here I have the drip tray that'll uh, collect the tar and then so just a few aluminum rods. I have a couple in the middle just in case the transformer actually wants to fall out, uh, keep it from getting in the tar. Here's our transformer. Just tuck the wires in here a little bit just to keep them out of the way. Let's center that. Perfect. All right, those drips will definitely be contained there, or so I hope. Let's get the heat cranked up. All right, so I have the lid on and the heat started. I have it set to ramp up to 400 over 20 minutes, and then it's gonna soak at 400 for three hours and turn the heat off after that. I'm just gonna check on it periodically to see what happens. I'm not sure if three hours is long enough or if it's uh, over time, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna keep on checking on it and go from there. So after three hours of heating, it shut off and I just let it cool overnight. Um, it was pretty late, so picking it up today. Let's see what we have. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'll take a closer look at this. Just like baking a cake, huh? This is all the tar that came out of here. Pretty cool. So this looks like our center tap 
right here. We had a bar gone here from the case to somewhere it goes toward the transformer and it's pretty solid. So I'm assuming that's what the two secondaries are tapped into right there. So that's definitely what we'll be removing. Although I'm gonna take the whole transformer out of here and put it in a isolated plastic box and fill that with oil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get everything out of here. All right, the mineral spirits are quite hot. So I'm just gonna pour this right on. I'll reserve some for later. For now, I'm just gonna use a paintbrush and kind of wipe it off and see how clean we can get this. I'll probably just do this off camera because I don't want to keep on turning the record on and off and get my camera all tar and uh, mineral spirit covered. So see you in a little bit. All right, I think that's about as clean as I'm gonna get it. Um, this is the primary and then the two secondary coils. I've removed a lot of insulation shrouding the secondary coils. I think I'm just gonna clean this up and then reuse it. I'm not sure, I think this is mica, I'm not entirely sure. But I think along with that and the oil, I'm gonna submerge the whole thing in. We should have enough insulation, hopefully anyway, that we don't have any arcs. So this soldering joint over here, I found out that's actually where the blue wire was connected. I snipped that off because we don't need it. That wire was to the center of the secondaries. So as I very frequently do with projects like this, I'm kind of digging myself deeper and deeper into a hole, but see between the core here and the top of the secondary coil, there is just a tiny amount of wiggle room in there. So it's really difficult to get any insulation. This is just some cardboard and that'll be impregnated with oil, but I just want it to be way more robust. So I noticed that this core is manufactured with these welds up here and on the other side. So if I just grind these welds off, I think I'll be able to pop the, the top of the transformer off and then just slide all the coils off and then I can wrap the center with Captain Tape. Beautiful. Now the easy part was getting that off. Might be a little tricky putting it back together, but yeah, these are connected in series still, so. This uh, will allow me to get this cleaned up quite a bit more too. Awesome. All right, so I filled this up with some hot mineral spirits again. So let's just go ahead and place all this in here. That looks pretty cool. All right, so this is after the hot mineral spirits bath and I cleaned them up a little bit more and I also wanted to get rid of all the mineral spirits inside the windings. So I threw it in the kiln again at 400 for about two hours and let it cool overnight. And a little bit more tar oozed out of the coils too. So I'm happy I did that. It'll allow more room for the insulation oil to seep into the windings, providing more insulation and also cooling it better. So I guess I'll go ahead and start wrapping everything up in Captain Tape. All right, I had the center all wrapped up and I wrapped up these parts as well, just for redundancy. And I left these top and bottom bare just because the there'll be more than enough of a gap here for the transformer oil to insulate adequately. Um, I realized that I never really explained the Captain Tape I have here is it's a polyamide. I, this is one mil thickness which you can see it's like quite thin and it's wonderful stuff. The dielectric strength is 7,700 volts per mil. So I wrapped this up at least five layers. So more than enough insulation around the core now. Here are the magnetic shunts that I removed. And on, on second thought, I think I'm actually gonna keep these in place, but instead I'm just gonna remove some. So there are 11 here, there are 11 on the top and bottom, uh, separating the primary and secondary. So I'm gonna remove three and then replace them. And what they do is essentially block the magnetic flux between the primary and secondary coils. So they uh, produce a flux around here and these block them and kind of short out the 
the transformer and, and instead make the magnetic lines go around here to the core and back to the primary when the secondary draws more current. So it's a current limiting function, but if I remove them or remove some of them, then it increases the amount of current that can be output from the transformer. And generally, the, the transformer wouldn't function if you remove these because it'll overheat. And I think I can get away with that because the extra heat that it's gonna be producing will be mitigated because instead of being in tar, it's gonna be in uh, a fluid, the transformer oil, and that'll keep things a little bit cooler and more isolated. All right, got the insulation for the secondaries on. Here we have the two magnetic shunt packets in place. And now just to add the primary coil. All right, almost fully reassembled. Just have to weld the core back together. Here we go. Well, they're not the prettiest welds in the world, but we have it all back together again. Okay, everything's all wrapped up. A little less visually appealing, but it's all secured. Um, I soldered connections to both the secondary coil terminals, and you can see we have 17.78 kilo ohms between the two, so didn't ruin the coils in this whole process, which is always a relief. And then you can see here, the primary coil, we, let me turn this to the lowest setting. Yeah, 1.1 1 .1 ohms. So awesome. I think we're all set to build an enclosure for this.
All right, got the enclosure all done, electricals hooked up, and just gonna cover this in oil now. So here I have the Shell Diela Oil AX. Uh, pretty sure it's Diela, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's uh, transformer oil. And I've put it in the kiln in a glass vessel for about three hours at like 110 Celsius, just to drive off water. And it's cooled down a little bit now to about 59 Celsius. And so the point of heating it is, and putting it under vacuum in the chamber is to help remove any water inside the oil. So water severely drops the dielectric strength and obviously we want that as high as possible so we don't get any arcs between the coils. Full disclosure, I actually made an enclosure previously that leaked really bad. Well, here we are. <laughs> And uh, I made it again with polycarbonate instead of uh, a, a acrylic window with HDPE sides. Um, nothing really sticks to HDPE and I couldn't really get it to seal properly. So made a oily mess everywhere, but hopefully this works out better. Hence the glass vessel underneath <laughs> just to catch any oil. I'm just gonna fill it about halfway because this will probably foam up when we pull a vacuum on it. All right, here's the moment of truth. Gonna pull a vacuum on it. Nice. Looks good so far. Ooh. Oh yeah. This is exactly what we want. Awesome. You can see the foam is the oil getting pulled right into the coils. Awesome. All right, so I wanted to test the transformer in a more controlled environment, so I installed it with the rest of the fuser components. And there's a lot going on here, but as a brief overview, uh, here we have line voltage in, supplying the primary coil of the transformer. And then from the secondaries, we have high voltage out that go to the full wave bridge rectifier. These are high voltage diodes that are packed in paraffin. And then from there, we exit the power supply and go straight to the fuser cathode. The electrons jump through the vacuum and return to the grounded fuser shell, which acts as our anode. And then on the return path here, they pass through this coil of resistance wire, which shunts a little bit of the current to an ammeter so we can measure the, the current of the system. And then some current also trickles through the high voltage resistor, which is also under oil. And this acts as a voltage divider and allows us to monitor the voltage through another meter. So I'll provide a circuit diagram of this setup to hopefully make it a little less confusing but let's uh, go ahead and get this thing fired up. Okay, here we are. Uh, pardon the noise from the vacuum pump and my yelling for that matter, uh, but I have to keep it running throughout the test to keep the pressures low. I set the pressure in the fuser to a level I know is decently easy to initiate glow discharge, um, right at uh, 120 millitor. And here we go, I'll, I'll turn up the voltage to the variac and we'll see how this works. Oh, beautiful. That is some beautiful plasma. Okay, so I'm gonna crank up the Varia, and yes, that makes sense. Okay, so you can see as I turned up the power from the Variac, the current increased, but the voltage just stayed low. And this is due to the magnetic shunting I described earlier. Uh, the, to pressure test the transformer, I'll have to decrease the pressure in the chamber and I'm just gonna keep the variac at the same setting to see how the system responds to the pressure change alone. So I'll go ahead and close the mass flow controller valve, which has been keeping the pressure high by letting some air trickle into the chamber, and we'll see how things respond. Clear this out and just set it to zero, so the vacuum pump will just try to evacuate as much air as possible, and here we go. All right, so there's steep drop in pressure. Awesome, awesome. All right, yeah, and there, there goes our plasma. That's plasma extinction. So 
to explain this, um, while we are decreasing pressure, it's almost better to think of this as removing molecules of air from a fixed volume. If we decrease the number of molecules in the chamber, the current will decrease. There are less molecules for the electrons to ionize, all while keeping the variac constant. So because the secondary coils are drawing less current, the shunts are no longer acting like an inductor and they'll allow the voltage to increase. So the voltage did increase, but then we had glow extinction because I'm not giving it enough power to continue ionizing the gas that remains in the chamber. So I'll go ahead and turn this up and see what kind of voltages we can get. I'm turning up the Variac now. So we're still no plasma, and we're up at a little above 10,000 volts. Okay. Now we're seeing some ionization. So I'm gonna crank this up. I'm, gonna, I'm not touching it anymore now. We're at 10,000 volts and about 12 milliamps. And it is adjusting a bit because the pressure's in, it looked like it was probably increasing a bit. Awesome, so yeah, the voltage is still continuing to increase and the current's dropping. I'll still crank it up more. Okay. And this is almost maxed out. That is maxed out right there. About 14,000 volts and about 13 milliamps. So I'm gonna turn this down because uh, <laughs> I heard the Geiger counter roaring. Uh, about above 15,000 volts, the X-rays are strong enough to penetrate the vacuum chamber and then uh, go through me. So I don't wanna keep it there very long. But no, oh, this is beautiful. So, Unfortunately, we'll never have the full rated voltage and full rated current at the same time because of the shunting, but because I made these modifications, I can definitely get away with much more than this transformer was designed for. I am quite happy with this, and thank you so much for watching.